Hi guys, my name is Steve Potts and today we are going to do a Camtasia tutorial. Specifically a kinetic typography tutorial. Now kinetic typography is also called kinetic text or text animation. So yes, this is a Camtasia how-to video but I'm not associated with or an affiliate of the creators of Camtasia. Okay, they are not paying me to make this video. If you do want to go check out their channel, I'll provide you with the link right down here where you can click and go check out their tutorial videos that they have available on YouTube as well. So today things are going to get a bit weird because I'm actually going to use Camtasia to record myself using Camtasia. So this is going to be the first time I've ever done this. So we're going to see how things go here, okay? But other than that, uh, let's get this thing kicked off here, shall we? Okay, guys, now before we talk about text animation, let's actually talk about text. Now, in Camtasia, there is a way where you can actually generate your own text. You go to callouts over here, click on text, uh, you pick a nice text font, you uh, make it as big as you can, you know comfortably and then you change the color to it right now you can do this and create text like this in Camtasia but if you're gonna do kinetic typography this is not gonna work for you okay the simple reason for that is if you turn this text on its side you'll see it constantly jumbles around for instance over here okay so this is not gonna work for you the other reason why I don't like using the text inside Camtasia, which does have uses, by the way. I'm not saying it's useless, but it's not good for this kind of thing. It's because when you turn this text on its side, you see the lines become a little fuzzy on the outside here. Okay, okay so we're going to get rid of that. The best way to bring text or use text in Camtasia is to actually go and create PNG images of text. The reason for that is because you can enlarge and shrink this text uh, very quickly. Uh, you can stand it on its head. You can spin it any which way you want. And the lines do not really distort on the outside. In other words, the text does not become fuzzy. Okay, so this is by far the best way to go here. Now, I use a product called Logo Creator by Laughing Bird Software, and I will include a link to um, the software where you can go purchase it. I believe the last time I looked at it, it was about 35 bucks. And this software does a lot more than text. There's a phenomenal lot of things there that you can use. So yeah, okay, so I created my uh, my text over there, right? And I love the way that, you know, you can do different things with this, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about basic animation. Okay, first of all, the most basic animation of all is to actually use transitions. So first of all, the most basic animation for text like this, now because we're using it as an image, right? It's a PNG image with a um, transparent background. Okay, what we can do is we can actually use transitions, okay? So I can cube rotate a piece of text in. Okay, so let's play that and then look in the preview window here to see what this piece of text element over here looks like with a cube rotate transition front and back. See it rotates in and then it rotates out. Okay, So that is just a very very easy animation that you can do without having to really make too many different settings or anything like that. Now there are many different transitions that you can try. Some of them have got some cool effects. Right, but there are also stationary animated effects. In other words, the word doesn't actually move. But what you're going to do is you're going to just create an effect to draw somebody's attention to a particular word on the screen at a particular time. Okay, so what I want to do here is I actually want to take the playhead and I'm just going to put it in the middle of the word here. Right, and what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to split. Right, see, so now we have two sections over here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glow transition. And I'm actually going to put it between these two guys, right? So now, if we play this, you'll see that all of a sudden, the word animation starts to glow and then go away, okay? There are, of course, other aspects that you can use here as well. Let's see, I think there is the ripple one, which is pretty cool as well if you put that one in there, 
right it'll draw somebody's attention to a particular word when they're actually watching the video right you can do something like that it looks like the words actually shaking water off of itself okay so these are some really cool easy basic animations that you can use but it's not really kinetic typography yet is it all right so what we're going to do here is we're going to take all of this out and we're going to start doing some animation with visual properties over here okay let's take this bad boy out let's take this guy over here and let's just put him over here in the actual editor in the timeline and we'll move our playhead to where it just starts. When we do animations of here as an add animation on the visual properties, there are two things you need to know about a particular piece of, or a particular element in a video that you want to animate. And those two things are, number one, where that element is before it has started to be animated, and then where it's going to end up. Again, what you want to do in between, of course, is important as well. But those are the first ones you need to know of where it's going to start and where it's going to end. And I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean. If we put the scrub head over here, right? And I put it right where it touches over here. It says animation, right? And I'm going to go click add animation. Right? And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this word to this corner over here. Okay? Now see, every time I move this text, see over here, there's a little blue dot and it's blinking at me, right? Okay, so that's telling me that I'm busy editing that element over there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stretch this animation out and we're just going to quickly have a look at it. You'll see there's a white dot over here and a blue dot, okay? The blue dot is where the animation ends up and the white dot shows you where the animation is going to start. So when the playhead runs, you'll actually start to see the animation take place and the duration of these two is actually the little yellow star over here. All right, so now we know where the word ended up and we know where it started. It starts over here and it ends in this top corner, right? But because I have the playhead on the left hand side of the little white dot over here what I can do is I, actually can, I can actually change where the word starts from so if you watch the animation now you'll see it travels all the way from this corner all the way to that corner right so I can change it from starting over here and then moving to that side and because I'm now on the right hand side of the big blue dot I can change where the word is going to end up so you see, all I'm doing is I'm changing where it starts and where it ends in order to edit my animation. Okay, so if I start on the outside of my canvas and I end up on the inside of my canvas, I can have a word fly in from outside to inside, right? And I can actually decide where that word is going to end up. Okay, so those are the two important things. Where does it start and where is it going to end? Okay, now, where it's going to start also has another significance as well. If we look over here, you'll see we have a Z rotation, Y is a rotation, and X rotation, right? Right now, it says negative 720, and I'm just going to make that zero. And just so that we look at the text over here, you see it still looks pretty normal. Okay, so I'm going to put the text up over here, the top of here. So that's where the, the animation is going to start, right? But what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to put a value in over here of 360. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to over here and I'm going to put it down on the bottom over here somewhere. Okay. Okay. So that's where the animation is going to end up and we know where it starts off from. Right. So let's play this animation and see what this looks like. Okay, see what's happened here is we have gone through negative 720 Z, right? So in other words, it's actually spinning in two different directions. So it's got a nice decent wobble going on over here, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to zero, okay? And so now the only rotation we have is on the Y axis over here, okay? Before the actual animation 
and the end of the animation over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the scrub head over and you'll see that what's happening is it's twisting on its way down. Okay. Now I can do it with the x-axis as well. So what I can do over here is I can put a value in 360. This is before the animation. All right. So when it comes in now, you'll see it's actually flopping over. See how it's coming in now? Completely differently, right? All right let's put this value to zero before the animation. All right. So we change this one to 360 over here. Oh, 630. Hmm. Must be late at night. Okay, so the value now is 360 on the Z and it will be zero when the animation is done. So it's got to go through that entire twist, right? So watch, if I bring it down, it's actually going to spin over that way and land. Okay, now, we can do this and then add other things to this animation. For instance, I could say that the text is really, really small when the animation starts. So I can make the scale 42. Uh, let's make it 27, okay? And I can leave the opacity at its own and we leave this value at 360, right? And let's play this animation and see what that looks like. So you see now we have two values going here, right? We have the size that is being changed because we know the size it's going to be at the end of the animation. We know the size that it's going to be in the beginning of the animation. We know the location it's going to be at the end of the location. We know the location it's going to be at the beginning of the animation. Right, so now let's imagine that what we want to do here is we want to take a word that is almost invisible and is then going to fly in to its location and become visible or more visible on the way there. So let's see what that looks like. So yeah, we went from light to dark, right? So you'll see what we're playing with here is we're actually playing with the size of things, we're playing with the opacity and the angle of these words. So in other words, I know that if I put this value over here at zero and I put this value here at 90, right, what I'll have when the word comes in goes will go from zero angle and it'll fall on its bottom, essentially like that. Okay? But see now it doesn't fit in there so good, right? So what I want to do is actually want to make it the correct size now, right? So, okay, so there we have the word come in and basically shrinks. So all we're doing here every single time is before the animation starts, we set the condition and the location of where the word is. And at the end of the word, we set the condition and location of the word again. And what Camtasia does is it animates it from the one condition and location to the other condition and location again. And what you need to do here is you need to play with your scale, you need to play with your opacity, play with these different rotating angles that you have over here, right? From start to finish. And that is basically how we do it. So just to give you a quick demonstration again, all we're doing here is in front of the actual animation over here, we set the condition that we want it to be in. So in the beginning it is 100% opacity. It is going to be 500 XP, 500% uh, large, right? And it's going to have, let's say, a 1000, right? Move that completely out of the way like that. Okay, and the duration of this entire thing I want to be 5 seconds long, right? So we're going to change that. So the entire duration from beginning to end of the animation will be five seconds long. So let's see what that looks like now. See that? Right, it takes five seconds to get from where it was to where it needed to be. So if we change this over here to 1000, okay, 
and then we actually play it again you'll see it rotates all the way in until it lands so that guys is the magic of kinetic typography in Camtasia is to simply know what the condition and location of the text is going to be and what the condition of the location and the text is going to be when it is done and Camtasia will basically do the rest for you all you need to do is set your durations and stuff like that and of course you can do multiple animations all at the same time multiple words all doing very different things at the same time and that is it guys um, if you have any questions have any problems any difficulty and you need me to brush over something or go over something again just to make sure that you actually have it um, please let me know and I'll actually address that okay now guys this is Steve Potts and we were talking about kinetic typography if you like the video please give us a thumbs up if you like my um, Camtasia tutorial uh, please subscribe because I'll actually have some other interesting tutorials on Camtasia and other aspects of blogging and marketing as well. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching.